Professor Amy Schuett. I just finished writing a book on Web 2.0 strategy, and I'm here today to talk to you about Chapter 1. A lot of people wonder what's really different about Web 2.0, and how is it really new compared to what we had in the dot-com era? It's all explained in this one diagram. It is a cash flow curve that's used by very many venture capitalists to try and track the performance of their portfolio companies. On one side is uh, dollars or cash flow, and on the other side is time. If you see these three different graphs and you're a venture capitalist, which of these three companies would you want to have invested in? Well, definitely Web 2.0 because it looks much stronger and it doesn't go through this dip or this burn rate that many Web 1 companies went through. So why did these companies that were also online in the first generation of the Web have so much trouble in becoming profitable? Well, it turns out that it's all because of the cost of new customer acquisition that to get new customers in the dot-com era or Web 1 was a very difficult thing. So you might have a company like Netflix that wanted to get lots of new, company, uh, new customers and it had to essentially offer a free trial month to get a customer to try a new DVD. Well, this cost Netflix a lot of money because each of those three DVDs that it sent to its new subscribers during that free trial month cost Netflix $20 a DVD. So you ended up with the company, Netflix, spending $60 to acquire a free trial subscriber who might or might not continue to subscribe to Netflix and end up paying money per month. So that explains why this curve for most Web1 companies looked like a J curve, a big dip in the first part for burn rate, where a lot of investment was made to acquire new customers, and then a fair amount of time before cash break even, when it crossed again the X axis. We ended up with the difference with Web 2.0 which is much more cash efficient. Um, here you have the freemium strategy not being a loss leader, but being one that is driven by collective user value. So one of the key things about Web 2 that we will emphasize over and over again is the concept and thinking about how do you use Web 2.0 to generate collective user value for your business. Flickr's collective user value is one that we can use as an example. Flickr talks about itself as a platform or context for interaction. And what Flickr did was actually have users, the people who actually put photos on their website, to create the largest and best organized online photo sharing library with 1.8 million images, 81% of which were public and 85% which had user added tags or categories that people had put to make the pictures more searchable. So this made Flickr infinitely more shareable and easily searchable. There are also six ways in which Flickr, through its natural um, usage, opened itself up to collective user value. Those six ways are explained in a little bit more detail in the chapter, but I'll just name them here. The first is that they opened up to user interaction. They created better search using user added tags. They discovered and explored in groups. They catalyzed their social network effects. They used do-it-yourself syndication and reuse and distribution. 
And finally, they expanded their digital ecosystem. So these are six ways in which Flickr created collective user value that was very important to their business and ones that could be implemented by any company, traditional or online. How could we summarize all of this? Web 2.0 companies like Flickr have a business model that have multiple revenue streams. So Flickr has subscription fees from premium accounts, advertising-based fees, as well as sponsorship and revenue sharing from partners. Collective user value reduces the cost structure and um, gets savings as a benefit for, for Flickr. So for example, the customer acquisition and retention costs and marketing are very low. For example, Flickr thinks that they might have only spent maybe $100 in their first year of marketing to get 1.8 photos and millions of users. They had inventory and photo stock that was essentially given or shared with them, with their users. Their support and direct payroll was much reduced by many people deciding to build applications around Flickr's open APIs, and their IT system was streamlined. So all of these things saved them a lot of costs. So in this final slide, we ask the question, how could Web 2.0 collective user value disrupt your business and industry? Take a look at that diagram again and think about the ways in which a competitor or you as a leader in your industry or in company could make use of collective user value.